Dearly beloved, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, welcome to our time of reflection and meditation, thinking through and praising God together, reading the Word of God, reading about people, men and women, that served God, and God was pleased with them. And during our generation, we also ask God that in our service, God may be pleased with our actions. Now, we dive into this word of God. There are some people we read about in the Bible, but there are little known people, little known, and we have always talked about them. And this is another lot of them. We have heard about many men, many women, whose names are very well pronounced, but there are those that actually have done greatly, but also uh, needed to be thought about, talked about, so that they can also challenge our faith. And so this time in the episodes of Finding God, we shall continue on. And I just want to ask you to go with me into the book of Exodus. And this is chapter 1, verses 15 following. And I'm asking you to share with me in the personalities that have done greatly in the salvation of the people of Israel. And they are actually out there in the periphery, but they did greatly. And these people, I just wanted to share with you about two ladies. And these two ladies were the midwives during the time when Moses was born. And you know the circumstances surrounding the birth of Moses. The people of Israel were in Egypt, were in slavery. The king of Egypt, the Pharaoh, and the people decided to do many things against the people of Israel, yet they were their slaves. They were working for them. And because of the fear that the people of Israel could expand, grow big in numbers, and they feared for their security, and so they decided to mistreat these people. But the people that stand out in this salvation story also, in addition to the men and women that are mentioned in the salvation story of the Israelites, that these two ladies, they are called midwives. And so in finding God, I thought that actually, if we think about them, they can uplift our faith. That there are some little actions that we can do that can bring life to somebody, that can bring life in a situation that seems troublesome, in a situation that seems hopeless. And for, for instance, the people of Israel were in a hopeless situation and everything was at a standstill in their life. But we just look at these two women, the midwives, in the lives of the people of Israel, and they did greatly that actually they can also uplift our faith. They can also uplift our little actions that we perform when we're still in this life. And so we get there into the book of Exodus, chapter 1, and we are going to read verse 15. And the verse 15, the Bible says, Then the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of them was named Shifra, and the other poor. When you serve as a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them on the bath stool, if it is a son, you shall kill him. But if it is a, a daughter, you shall leave you shall, she shall live. And verse 17, but the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but let the male children live. So the king of Egypt called the midwives and said to them, why have you done this? And let the male children live. The midwives said to the Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwives come to them. And verse 20, so God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and grew very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Friends, I just thought that actually we talked together in the little time that we have about these women 
in the salvation history of the people of Israel. Of course, we have talked about great figures like Moses, great figures like Aaron, great figures like Joshua, great figures that actually played a very fundamental role in the salvation of the people of Israel. Of course, I've talked about what God did through those men and in some cases, there are also women. And we have also talked about some other figures like Miriam, uh, the sister to Moses, and there are several others. But now these ladies, the midwives, they challenged my faith when I, was, when I read this portion of scripture. This is how they challenged me. Because during their time, maybe what they were doing, they didn't even think that actually it would be something that will stand out in time to come. And so these women made a choice to stand on the right side, to stand on God's side. And history now states clearly about their contribution in the salvation story of the people of Israel. They made a choice, and which choice can you and I can also do the same. During our time, there are some little things that can be done in our professions, in our work, as we, as we could go about doing your things here and there, there, there can be a little thing that you can do that can save a life. And so these women were significant during that time. Actually, they stood out. And when we read the story, it speaks. And so in our finding God, we can also, in, during our time, say, yes, we purpose to serve God in situations that may not be palatable, in situations that may not be conducive, but we remain focused, we remain as a people that God will be pleased with. So these two ladies, Shifra and Pua. Shifra, in their language, when you read about her, the name refers to something that is fair, you know, something's good, you know, nice, fair. And the poor in their language refers to something that is splendid, great. And indeed their actions exhibited the meaning of their names. So these were Hebrew midwives. You can imagine the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, wants to deal cruelly with the people of Israel the Hebrews, and he uses the very midwives, the very women who serve these very people, who belong to this very tribe. And one thing that actually stands out for them is that they stood to challenge the decision and they stood their ground to follow their professional ethics. And so they start to challenge you, they start to challenge you and me. And in areas of faith in God, these women challenge me, they challenge you. In the area of obedience to God, they stand to challenge you to challenge me. In times of decision making, sometimes when you are making decisions, in difficult times, it becomes very, very challenging. And so Shifra and poor had a decision to make that could bring Maybe they could have done it unknowingly that actually it would impact their nation greatly. But look sent to me that actually these women challenge us that there are some tough times that we face, that there are some difficult times that we face. But these women, little did they know that what they were doing would impact their nation, the Hebrew nation. And so there are things that I just desired because we have people, we have our professions that we serve in. But even when you are not professionally trained, but there's some work, there's some work that you are doing, God can be using you. God may be using you in that work that you are doing. It can be a manual job. It can be, some people call them odd jobs. But God can be using you wherever you are. God used the Shifra and poor to bring a difference, to challenge the times and save the people of Israel 
in a little way. And so one thing that stands out, number one, is the professional integrity of these women. Professional integrity, and actually which is usually compromised very, very much when difficult times strike, when situations become oblique, become not clear. Sometimes someone will say, I will put aside my professional ethics, I will put aside my professional integrity, and otherwise. And so these women challenge us, you and I, if you are in any profession, if you are in any work that you are doing, what is it that actually that you are doing that glorifies God? What actually is your, no, is your obligation in a situation that you may be in? And during our time, there are many things that are happening and we tend to compromise with the times. We tend to compromise with the situations. But these women did something that actually challenged my faith. And the reason why I am talking about it because the challenge is real and it can impact your life as well. And remember what St. Paul does mention when he's talking about the work, when we are doing work with our hands. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 23, 24, there's something that actually Paul puts to us, to you and me, as we are to work. You never know what God is intending to do. And this is what the Bible says, that whatever you do, work heartily. As for the Lord, and not for men, knowing that from the Lord, you will receive your inheritance as your reward. Pray the Lord. You receive as an inheritance your reward. You are serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray the Lord. And so Paul puts it very, very clearly in Colossians 3, 23 to 24. Work at it heartily. So my brother, my sister, your work Shifra and poor knew what they were doing. And so I just want to ask us that in our professions at our work, professional integrity, professional ethics, and these women stood out. Little did they know that they were impacting something, that they were impacting their nation, that even they were making history for themselves, and history speaks well about them. And so as we do something today, Consider what history will be speaking about you as you go about with your work, as you go about relating with other people. What will be talked about you? What will history talk about you? Now, point number two about these women is actually something that I ask and you ask yourself as you get out of your house in the morning, and you ask, what is your sense of purpose? What will drive your decisions in everything that you're going to do today or the moment that you're going to do something? What is your sense of purpose? Shifra and Pua had this in mind when they were dealing with the situation, the sense of purpose. One, they feared God. And because they feared God, in verse 17, listen to me, my brother, my sister. Because they feared God, in verse 17 of chapter 2, chapter 1, verse 17, that Exodus, the portion of scripture that we are reading, is that, but the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the male children live. And so in verse 20, so God dealt, verse 20, God dealt well with them. God dealt well with them, and the people multiplied and grew. And verse 21, that because they feared God, he gave them their own families, pray the Lord. And so we pray that by the work that we do, by the fear of God that we exhibit, God will multiply us. We receive blessings. You will receive blessings, and that actually in every activity, as you work heartily, as you exhibit, you know, commitment, integrity, discipline, obedience to what God is saying. These women benefited. Least did they know that actually they were doing something that would bring them blessings for their families. And you know, I've said it before I say it again, there could be something little that you are doing. It impacts you as a person, but also the members of your family. 
So I address young men, I address fathers, I address mothers, I address bosses, I address servants, whoever they are, that the little that you can be doing, God extends his blessing to other people. Shifra and poor did something and God expanded them. And the Bible says in verse 21 that actually God gave them their own families. And so I pray that the God you serve, that the God whom we are talking about, whom we are believing even during our generation in our workplace, even when you're a sweeper, you may be sweeping on a street, you may be a sweeper in the office, you may be a cleaner, you may be, you know, whatever you are doing. The fear of God, there are blessings. And God expanded these women's families. He gave them families and expanded them. And so, friends, these women thought about their relationship with God first. At your workplace, do you do the same? And fear of God, faith in God comes with blessings. And may he multiply the same blessings upon you and upon your family and upon the members that are around with you. So the issue is, what are we doing? Remember also, one other thing is, whom are you obeying? Whom would you take to be, um, you know, someone who should command in your life? The chief and the poor knew that actually God would, that God was. And during our time, we compromise a lot, and that's why our blessings fly away. And this reminds me of what the apostles went through when they were arrested, they were beaten, and things like that, because they were speaking something. And so Peter, in Acts of the Apostles, does mention something when the apostles were arrested for, you know, commanded, they were commanded to do otherwise from what God had told them to do. And Jesus had sent them to go all over the world and make disciples of all nations. But there were obstacles along the way. But this is what Peter said in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verse 29. And the Bible says, Acts of the Apostles 5, 29, they said, Peter facing the authorities, said, but Peter and the other apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. Now, the point that actually that Peter makes here is we must obey God and not men. Shifra and poor had the king of Egypt mentioned to them. He was their boss. But listen to me. They said we shall listen to God. And so... This is the response. There are situations that can come and press and force you into doing wrong. But Shifra and Poor have a lesson for you. Shifra and Poor has have something to live with you in finding God. And of course, we get squeezed sometimes so much, but this is what God is saying to us. So Shifra and Poor respect life because they fear the God. Now, is there any fear of God today in our generation? Now, finally, these ladies actually challenge me immensely. I learn from them personally also never to lose sight of one who's calling and purpose. These women were nurses, these women were midwives in a medical profession, but they never lost sight of their calling. Even when the authority was telling otherwise, but they never lost their calling. Now, many times, of course, actually, the medics have what they call Hippocratic oath, the oath that they swear or preserving life. And these women stuck to, I don't know whether it was there by then, but these women in their medical profession remained with the purpose in their life. So never lose sight why you are you. And why you are in that place? Never lose sight that God has positioned you in that place, in that position. God has put you there for the reason. Yes, you know what to do. Yes, you know when you can do it. Yes, you may know how to do it. But the question now is, 
about purpose that made you be there. So remember, my brother, my sister, that in everything that we do, in everywhere that we shall be, I am challenged, I'm a clergyman, but then there are also those that are in various positions, wherever you are, whatever work that you are doing, serving people, serving the public. Let us consider this, the position that we are in, the offices that are occupying, or the work that we are doing. Someone may say that actually you don't have the work, but God has a position. You, at least you are you in your family. It can be the position as first born, second born, or last born, or middle born. That's your position as well. Praise the Lord. And how are you using that position to bring glory to God? And so this is something that actually God is watching uh, over us. God is watching over you. God is watching over me at the work that we do. As we get out of our houses in the morning, pray the Lord that actually God gives us life as we get out there. So remember that there is a blessing in obeying God. These women, Shifra and Pua, obeyed God and God multiplied them, gave them families. Other versions of the Bible said that he opened their wombs and they had children. Now, let's get out there and do something good. Do something good for somebody. And God calling Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, he says, through you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. All the nations, all the peoples. So may your work that you do, that you extend, Bless another person. Now, Shifra and Pua did that. Hebrew women gave birth and boys were born. And among the boys that were born, the Savior, Moses, comes. And listen to me. You may be doing something, you're doing something small today, something little today. You may think that you're doing something of less impact. God knows where it will lead his people, where it will lead his church, where it will lead your family, where it will lead your nation. And so serve God and there's obedience. There is a blessing in obedience. Their wombs were opened. They were able to have children. They built their own families. God released his favor upon them. Now, my brethren, that when you are doing work, may God use you. I have been challenged by Shifra and Poor. They have taught me immensely at whatever little work that I'm working to remember that it will impact somebody, that it will impact a situation, that these women's actions impacted the situation in which they were. The Israelites eventually, because of growing in numbers and God blessing them, the Savior comes through the same situations even when we shall look at it again, another person that impacts our life and that God who positioned the Shifra and poor positions you, that through you, your nation, through you, your family, through you, another person of the mother's type, the baby boys, and here he actually is talking about baby boys. Let us take care of the baby boys. That's another very important critical point. Yes, we might have, you know, the emancipation that has taken place for the girl child. But listen, we shall have another time and talk about the boy child in this episode of Finding God, leaving the boys live, be alive, because there is something that they can play. So parents, mothers, fathers, let the little, little, Boys, let the boys also live. So this is something that has left a mark on me. And I pray that it leaves a mark on you in the work that you do. That as you position yourself like Shifra and the poor, that God will be in, those, in that position, whether position at work, position in office, wherever it is, position wherever you are, but also position in your family. You are number one, you are number two. That's your position and wherever you are. May God use you. May God use me. May God's favor, may God's favor rest upon me. May God's favor rest upon you. And so that like poor and Shifra, an impact will be created. It may not be seen now. Like these women, whatever they were doing, may, may not have been seen at that moment. And the Hebrew nation never knew 
what God was working through these women. And nobody may know what you are going through, what you are doing behind the curtains, praying, trusting, obeying God. So even underneath, obey God, trust God, do some little act of mercy to somebody. And God will bless you. God will watch over you. God will speak immensely about you. And history will reckon, history will recognize the little that you have done. And so may God keep you, may God provide for you. And may God, who was with Shifra and poor, be with you, expand you, grow you, and favor you, and so that through you, other people will be blessed. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.